My name is Jonathan Silva, trainer at Pragmatic Works, and welcome into another video here for YouTube, taking a look at using Power Automate and SharePoint together. For this video, I'm focusing on nulls in SharePoint. We get nulls all the time on our SharePoint list, null values in a selected column in a specific cell, and understanding how to work with those within Power Automate is something that's quite tricky sometimes when we're starting to, to work through our flows. So what I'd like to work with this time is working in a SharePoint list that may or may not have null values and how to set up a flow to check if those null values are there and based upon that check or that condition, we can go ahead and make sure that the flow is operating properly from there. So let's jump into our SharePoint list to take a look at our scenario for this one. And then from there, we'll build out our flow. So if we take a look at this SharePoint list, you'll notice it's called our employee time card. I only have three columns on this list. I have the name of the employee, I'll put myself in there. We have our clock in time and our clock out time. And the purpose of this SharePoint list is to simply store whenever we clock into work and clock out of work. Now we can initiate a couple flows to actually add in um, this, this clock in or clock out, create straight in SharePoint, whatever you wanna have, but it's pretty simple to just Go ahead and click one and add that data in there. If you're using Power Automate via Flow, you can go ahead and have a manual trigger that's that's stored in a Power app um, and anywhere else that you could just have within the Power Automate itself to go ahead and have that manual trigger, create an item on SharePoint, pick one value or the other. Pretty simple in that case. In fact, I do even have a flow that is gonna, here, here's our, our clock in. Manual trigger and then create the, the employee uh, clock in there. I have it based on the username, whoever initiates that, whoever's logged in at that present moment. And I have it for my clock in time, a little bit of expression there. Some add hours to UTC. Now I'm in the US, uh, on the East Coast of the United States. So it's going to be adding three hours to UTC now to get to that value, right? And that's, that's not something totally uh, difficult to set up. Just two different actions here as we work through this flow. But that's not the problem. The problem is if I go ahead and enter in a new clock in here, say if I were to run this flow, and I'll go ahead and run the flow and explain it. If I were to run this flow manually, save and test, make sure everything's ready to go and run the flow, I'm gonna add in a new value, which is exactly what I wanna do. But that's, that's not the end piece here. If I come here, you can see there's my new value. I've added that in for today's date, but the next problem is now gonna arise. What if for tomorrow, I come in and clock in, maybe in the morning, maybe in the afternoon, whenever it is, I hit that button, it's gonna add in a new clock in, but what if I forgot to clock out today? What if I forgot to select that other button clock out, if I just did something else and just didn't go through the process? I don't wanna have in another empty list here, another empty value. I wanna make sure that that one from yesterday gets addressed first. So we need to come in here and inside of our flow and set up a way to see if yesterday was complete, if that clock out time was actually there or not. And then based upon that check, that condition, if I didn't clock out yesterday, go ahead and maybe send me a reminder email. Or if I did clock out yesterday, then we're all set to go ahead and clock in for today. So let's go ahead and edit our flow to make sure based upon that check and that null value there, that we can get everything to be organized the exact format we want. And then we're gonna test and see if we pop up with any other issues from that point on. All right, so if we come into our flow here, I'm gonna go ahead and edit this. We think about our create an item, that works good. If we wanna check if this clock out time is there or not, there are a few steps that we need to add in in order for that check to work properly. So we're gonna come back into our flow here and add a new step. And if you wanna be able to see if those values are there or not, the action we need to add in is a get items action for SharePoint. We wanna get the entire SharePoint list. We're gonna capture that entire array in order to return to see if those values are actually there. So I'll go find my site address, my list name, and now what I wanna do is select show advanced options here because I'm gonna add in a couple filters. In this case, we wanna take a look at our filter query to start off with. What we wanna make sure we're doing is finding out that exact individual, filtering down to that individual there, that user, in order to return 
all of their clock-ins or clock-outs, right? We want to make sure we're getting to that one person and not everybody. Say we have 50 employees, it's going to be tough to make sure we get that exact one. So we're going to filter our query here to our title. That's how it's being stored in SharePoint. Our title equals the user name. We're going to use our single quotes to wrap around our dynamic content. There's our user name. And then what we want to do is make sure we're returning yesterday's, right? That's the big option here. We want to make sure we return in the one that might be blank. Let's say this one is our yesterday. So we're going to come back in here on our order by, we're going to do it by our ID in a descending order. And then once we go in a descending order, so from top up, right, bottom up here, we're going to return just one single value. Okay, so we're returning yesterday's going from the bottom here, going in that bat, that way there. Okay, so now once we've filtered down to that selected value from yesterday, right, or from the most recent, say if I clock in, clock out all on the same day multiple times, I'm only getting the most recent one. So that's our filter there based upon my username. The next step here is to add in that condition. And the condition we're going to add in, the control here, is, to, is going to check our clock out time. So that's the value we're going to pass through our condition is the clock out time right here. And notice once I pass in that value for the clock out time, because we are pulling from our get items, which returns an array, we are now going to have our apply to each loop passed in because it's looking at the value, the list of all of the items from the get items that can be passed through there. And now I can say the clock out is equal to, in this case, it is empty. So that's our null. So we're going to use our expression here. We can go ahead and pull in our null, hit OK, and there is our condition. So let's think about the condition. If the clock out is equal to null, if that's true, I don't want to create an item. I want to go ahead and let's say for this case, Say we send an email, right? Just do a quick one, maybe a notification, something like that. Um, but send an email to the individual that is attempting to clock in. All right, there it is there. We're gonna go ahead and send it this email with some dynamic content to the user email. So whoever's logged in, we're gonna say, you forgot to clock out last time. Please see your supervisor. Something like that, right? Pretty simple. Now that's if we have that empty value, but if we, if we don't have that empty value, say we did clock out last time, well, what do we wanna do? Let's go clock in, right? Create a new item. So I'm gonna drag that into our if no branch of the condition, and let's go ahead and save this and give it a good test. All right, it is ready to go. I'm gonna hit test, a manual test. We're gonna hit test right here, and we're gonna run the flow. And there it's running. And let's see, we're doing our apply to each. Our flow has run successful. Which branch do we go down in our condition? The true, which that's exactly what we wanted to see. Because this is a null value, we don't wanna add in that new piece there, so we should have our email. Let's go in and find that email. And there is the email that's been sent. Look, you forgot to clock out last time. Please see your supervisor. So that's worked exactly the way we intended it. So because of that, let's just go into our SharePoint list here and let's say, you know what, let's say we've clocked out. Let's just come in here. Let's put out a clock out time and just say that we actually did clock out. Let's put it for right after our clock in. Let's put in say, let's put in the time here. Let's choose 430. You know what, let's edit that. Let's choose our time here. Let's go ahead, instead of 430, let's say we did it for 20, right? Let's just choose that one. Okay, and that's been saved. Let's add it in there. That's been done. We've clocked in, we've clocked out. Okay, let's make sure we test it once again here as we go through this. So we've, we've know that the, the expression result is true because there is that null value. We've sent that email. Let's do in here another edit and test. Let's run this once again. 
And let's take a look at the result we get. Let's run the flow. We're now checking and our flow is complete. Let's take a look within our apply to each and our condition. In this case, it's false because that clock out is not null. There is a value in there. We've gone in and we've created an item. And now let's take a look at my SharePoint site. All I need to do is do a quick refresh on here. And there it is. There's my new item. There is their time that I have in there. So now that works. So the flow works pretty well, right? Things are looking pretty good for this flow right here. But what if we had another issue? What if we had, maybe we had to be did something where we set up a flow that every month or every quarter we refresh the SharePoint site, that we take all the data, we cleanse it, get rid of every instance on it. Maybe we don't want to store that much data. We have a lot of employees working with it. We get up to the storage capacity. We say, you know what, let's just start anew. Let's go from there and see if, you know, we could just start in for a new year, new month, new quarter, whatever it might be. Well, if that's the case, let's think about it. Because remember, our check here, if we're going through this, is checking that clock out time. And if it's saying it's returning null, but technically our clock out time is blank. It's null already. So we it will always say, oh, if it's null, send that email. It's never gonna give us that, 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 that other condition because there's nothing there to check. It's literally empty. So let's, let's take a look. Let's delete this and let's see what we return when we delete all of those from there and see what we get. Let me do a quick edit. We're gonna test there and let's see what we get for this one. So I'm gonna come here, test, a manual test. Let's run this. Flow is run successful, apply to each, but it's not even doing the condition. If you notice here, are they apply to each, nothing happens. Our get item, it's return, it's went in and got items, but there's nothing to return. It's filtered down to nothing. There's nothing to check in the condition. Therefore, nothing happens. Well, that's not good, right? What happens if somebody, we can't even start the process in this case. So we need to fix this again in order to make sure that if there's nothing on the site or on this list here, that it still goes through the process. So we have to do a, a, another edit here. And if we go through this here, what we need to do is we need to add in another condition, okay? Now let's take a look here. We just we, we kind of minimize our apply to each that has our condition inside of it. If we come in here and choose to add in another condition, what we want to do is check to see if there's anything on this list in the first place. And if there's something on the list, then we can go ahead and do our apply to each and apply our condition that we've already created. But if there's nothing on the list, let's just go ahead and create our very first clock in. So let's add that into our flow. We're gonna add in another condition here for this second check. So we're gonna add in an action here. We're gonna do another condition control and we'll rename this because I don't like where it says condition two. Check if values exist on SharePoint list. So in this case, the choose a value here, we're gonna to have to take a look at the SharePoint list itself. Right, so we're gonna select in here and we're gonna go into our expression. And the expression we're gonna add in here is the length expression. And what this will allow us to do is test the length, the actual, is there anything there, the amount of characters or values in here. So we're gonna pass in within our length, our dynamic content, the value list of items. Test in the length there. And when we do that, what we're then gonna gonna to try to, to, to pull in for this is, okay, what in that length is actually populating for us? So as we go all the way through it, part of our condition here, so we hit okay, the length is not equal to, in this case, is greater than. If the length is greater than zero, if there's anything at all, one, a thousand, a million items in there, whatever it might be, right, I'm just kind of making up numbers there, if it's greater than zero at all, then let's go ahead and do all of the steps we've already designated. Okay, go through the checks, go through our apply to each with our condition, with our clock out is equal to null. If it is equal to null, send that email, let them know they can't do anything. If it's not equal to null, create that item. But if the length 
is not greater than zero, which means there's nothing here in the first place, we wanna just go ahead and create the item to start off with. So let's go ahead and add in that create item step. Now I'm gonna go in here and try to copy that out from my action I already have in my if no branch. So I'm gonna come in here and choose copy to clipboard. And let's hope that the preview feature is working today. Here's my clipboard. I'm gonna add that in, there it is. We've just copied that in. We've selected our ellipses on the action and we've chosen again here inside our condition you select the ellipses on the action here, you can choose copy to clipboard, which allows us to then utilize that as we add an action and choose my clipboard, right? And you can choose that there, and there is our create item action. So now we could say create item on employee time card list. I'm gonna rename this real quick. If no values exist, let's do that. Okay, so we can tell you where it's coming from, where it's going. Let's go ahead and save and test this now. Now we're gonna see based on that condition, do we have anything in there? And if we have something in there, let's go through the process. All right, let's go ahead and make sure there's nothing on our list here. We're gonna hit test, test here once more. Go ahead and run our flow. Go ahead and hit done. And the flow has run successful, let's take a look. We've gotten those items, we filtered down properly. Here's our condition. Ooh, the initial condition has been returned false because there's nothing on that list. So therefore, we're gonna create something in the first place. I'm gonna come over to my list, there it is. There is our very first one. So now we've checked this to make sure that if there's nothing there, we're gonna add that in. Now if I were to go once again and run this flow again, do another quick test, we know because we've already done this, that if I go ahead and run this, it's gonna run successful. We're gonna now have our expression is true because it is greater than zero, right? We've come into our apply to each, based in our condition, the result is true once again, that we have nothing here for our clock out. So we should get another email and guess what? I just got another one. Here's our timestamp there that matches. You can see that I'm not making it up. They're 431, 431, nice and quick there. Okay, there's our second email there. Everything is working. So we've now set up this flow to work in the exact format that we wanna see it, checking for nulls, checking for empty values on that SharePoint list. To check for the null, go ahead and put in a condition, searching based on a specific column for that null. In this case, it's better to filter down in our get items action here using that filter query, that OData filter query to match up the username, order that in descending order based on the ID and return one. So it's just looking at the most previous. If you wanna to return two, it's gonna look at the two previous or the three or the four, however many you wanna add in there. And then once you bring that back, we can add in our length expression in there, looking at the value list of items, so looking at the entire array. Is there anything in there or not? If there's nothing there, go ahead and add in our new one. If there, if there is something there, go down our next condition, all the checks that we've built in there to make sure things are returned the exact format that we want. Thanks for joining me again for this one. Hope you're learning a little bit more about working with Power Automate and SharePoint together, working with nulls and blank values and any type of database or data source is often very tricky, for, especially for those of us that are a little new to, to Power Automate. So hopefully this video is helpful for you in figuring out those little annoying, nagging issues that you may have so you can set yourself up for success in the future. Thanks again for joining me. See you around for our next one.